Welcome back to Dalry Models. As you can probably tell from what's in front of me, I'm going to be doing the front fork assembly in this video. Um, so I've made a start. Um, I've glued the two halves of the front fender together and then sanded the seam down so it's nice and smooth. And then glued it to a cocktail stick ready for gluing, uh, for painting. Um, and then I've got the brake calipers ready and what I've done on these is I've cut off the um, this part that attaches to the actual brake line and then put a pin through that so that I can paint them separately I've also cut the ends off ready to attach the thinner wires um, thin hoses that I'm going to use to be more in scale but I'm also using the aftermarket um, set from uh, the Tamiya fork set and I'll just show you when I find it this is the kit part that you get with these forks that you'd have to sort of mask up and get all painted and everything and with what you get in the um, the aftermarket set is you get the actual main body of it a couple of turn metal pieces that sit underneath like that I'll show you on there so you put that on there and that goes on that so you don't need to paint these and then there's a pin in a separate set um, in a bag somewhere that uh, goes through that to hold it all together um, so it's only actually this grey part that I need to paint so I'll move those out of the way because I don't need those so I've got all of the brake parts together and I'm also going to be using these parts from the scale motor support set to go over the actual discs um, which will need painting up as well so um, I shall see you in the spray booth shortly um, where we go through painting all of these right so here I am in the spray booth and the first thing I've done is painted the centre parts for the um, front brake discs with the metal primer as they were photo etched pieces. So I've loaded up the airbrush now with Zero Paints grey filler primer ready to do the rest of the grey bits, um, or the rest of the plastic bits rather. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn the extract fan on. I've already got the airbrush pre preloaded with paint so I'm ready to go so as usual first thing to do check the paint flow and then what I'm going to do first is paint the front mudguard so because I've done the join down the centre of it I don't want to go heavy on this I just want nice light mist coats especially over the centrepiece where the seam is because I don't want it showing through. So that's the first mist coat done. So I'll put that to the side and do some more of the rest of it. So I'll work through all of these pieces and then I'll come back in a second. Okay, so I've just been going through various parts on this so uh, most of it I've got painted up as you can see here I've got the calipers done and the uh, wheel hubs and all the rest of it but what I'm going to do now is paint the bottom of the forks um, and it calls for a mix of X32 and XF1 which is flat black and it's two parts black to one part XF2. So I'll put the black in a little bottle as you can see. So I'm just going to pop some of this in here. So using the pipette to uh, make sure I get the right amount. And then 
make sure I put the lid on so it doesn't get knocked over and knock the camera in the process and then give this a mix in the cup in the beaker it's always good practice to mix in a beaker or something rather than mixing in your airbrush because then if you need to change quantities or anything like that or anything then uh, you've not you've not got it in your airbrush already so I can put all that in there test paint flow and you can probably see from my mat that I've done a fair bit of painting off camera so I thought to miss this on Gonna need a few coats on this to uh, give it full coverage we want. It gives this sort of dark metallic y blacky sort of colour. A little bit thicker start to get an idea what the actual colour looks like on it. So I'll show you when I come to assemble it what the uh, what the final colour is. But the next thing I want to show you is something that I've not used before. I picked it up recently is this for the actual disc brakes. So I'll finish painting these, clean the airbrush out, load that up and uh, we'll see what that goes like. Alright, so I've got the carbon ceramic grey paint in the airbrush now and uh, I believe this is something that's fairly recently brought out um, for actually painting the disc brakes um, and I've seen a few pictures on Facebook and been impressed with the results so this will be my first go with it so you can uh, see with me what it's actually like so just going to do some going across first coat on this side so the first cut on that if it comes out on camera I don't know if it's actually focusing or not you see the sort of speckled effect that you get on sort of real ceramic discs so that looked quite quite a cool effect so again once they're finished painted up I'll uh, I'll show you on the other bench in a bit more detail but uh, that looks quite cool from uh, from the first coat so uh, yeah I'll uh, show you the rest of it in the assembly parts and then shortly um, so as you can see I've got some of the parts laid out I've actually made a start on it um, with getting all the parts painted up as you can see so the first thing that I'll show you is the disc assembly that I've made up so you've got as you can see there are a few pieces that make this up um, the actual disc itself has got a photo etch piece around it I've just painted the silver bits the bolts with just some silver paint the tops of these are just scrape the paint off and then uh, and then they're just assembled up so I've got those ready to assemble and the same with the other side of the fork which I've got assembled up so painted the Brembo logo done the, um, the valve for the brake fluid and then just a few sort of detail parts in there as well so they're done and ready to go so we're ready to make a start on on this next bit so the first thing i want to do 
is to assemble this part. So I want some glue on the back of this, which I've got here ready. So I'm just going to go around all of these, just apply some glue on there. I've made sure already that there's no paint on any of these notches that are going to interfere with that. So that should sit on there like that. It says. And then we've got this piece here, which wants to go on the inside of there. Right. We'll do it on this piece. I think I just want a couple of little bits of glue just on the ends of those. And then that will fit with those notches in there, like so. We'll put that to one side to let the paint dry, the glue dry on it, and then one there glue dry, then that will fit onto the actual wheel like that. And there's a notch in the back of this piece that aligns with the notch on there, so you know when it's in the right place. So. I will make up the rest of the fork assembly while that glue's drying on that uh, on that disc. I want that out as well. So for the fork assembly, this is from the um, extra fork set that you can get. So. Something else that I've done, which I've not got out. I've got these little caliper spaces. Which you can see there. Just fit in, in between here and the caliper so you can see. You can see that on there. What it is that I've done. So, put a bit of glue in the hole ready on there, and then that can just drop in without dropping it. piece goes on there and then this piece on here and you've got on one side of it a different notch and that is for this pin to go through which wants to be on the back so make sure you get that the right way around and then I'll pick that up put a bit of glue on the end of it and just drop that in the hole it goes all the way through and then that locks that into place on there and then what I actually did was I cut these off they actually molded in onto the uh, calipers and I cut them off so I can paint them separate which is easier than masking so again, I just want a bit of glue on the end of that pin that's what I've done I've got some copper wire um, so I drilled a hole in this piece drilled a hole in that piece so that I can use that copper wire as a pin to uh, to insert it and hold it in place. Like that. And it's a much e neater job that you get than uh, trying to mask it all off and then that caliper will sit on there like that. So I might leave that until after I put the wheel on just so that I don't get any interference it actually says to uh, to do that in the next step so I don't want to cause any problems for myself so the other thing I've got 
is the piece for the uh, brake lines and so I'm going to put some glue on those and fit that. Make sure you get it the right way round. So one side only has one wire coming out of it, whereas the other side has two. So this will be on the right hand side where the front brake lever will be. So you've got an extra wire that goes up from there, which is to the lever, brake lever. And then obviously one down each side for the um, to the brake calipers. So next thing to do is to fit these. I'm not sure if there's one side is easier than the other for this. Got a notch on that one, so I'll do that one first. So that's just got a notch in there, which aligns with this hole in there. Make sure you get it the right side. And then we've got the same to do on the other side for the other fork. Without dropping it. I'm going to put that down for a second. So you can see if I try and put the wheel through there with that caliper on it's going to uh, it's not going to fit very well so that's why I've left that other caliper off so what I'm going to do is get my other glue rather than using super glue off uh, as this is plastic to plastic I will use the plastic cement for this So you get that the right way around, I've got the other piece upside down, which isn't very clever. So I'm obviously not paying attention to what I'm doing, and that's what happens. So we shall do that again. Oh, sorry about that for those that are... watching and I'm not doing a very good example as to what to do this is more like what not to do but there you go we all have those moments easy to fix if you uh, pick up on it quickly it's a lot harder once you've uh, actually let all the glue set properly so put the lid on that properly and then you see that that's all done now and then I've got the front mud guard, which is all painted, decaled and polished up. And that's going to sit in here. So, just put some glue on that and get that fixed into place. But I'll still do that in a little bit. I'm going to give that glue a chance to dry off and settle. And then I'll get this, uh, get that glued on. So I'll be back shortly. Okay, as you can see, I've uh, got the wheel in and the uh, front mud guard 
fender in there now. So what I'm going to do is I've cut a piece of rod to the right length. So I just need to feed that through. So I'm just going to check to make sure it is aligned properly and goes through, which it does. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of glue just in that hole there and start to push that through. Just to hold that in place. Obviously, I don't want any glue in the uh, where the wheel is. So that's in place now. Wheel spins. So I can put the uh, other caliper on now. glue on each of these and then position that on like so and then what I'll do is I'll run the wires and everything off camera I've got this thinner wire that I'm using that's got uh, a bit of wire inside of it that I'm going to use for doing the brake, wire, brake lines so that's that, and then I will use some photo etch or some nuts or something to uh, cover that axle, that rod. Um, so that's pretty much the front fork assembly done. Um, so what I'm now going to do is the uh, top of the fork. So I've got this piece, which is the top of the fork that I've painted and decaled up, and uh, got some photo uh, photo etch. No, some uh, turn metal rivets in there, and the uh, tops of the forks are from the aftermarket Tamiya fork set. And then that's just all painted up. And then I've got the uh, these pieces. Go. I've put a bit of wire inside there. Cut that out. Put a bit of wire in, and put a couple of photo etch heads on those. Got the centre cap, and over here I've got my handlebars. So that is the brake lever. Again, it's got a metal rivet in there, a couple of photo etch heads, a bit of detail painting, wire for the handlebars, paint the switches on. So that one's ready, and then the same for the clutch side. Again, a bit of, bit of detail painting on there, a few photo etch heads and the grip wire again. So they're ready to go on, and I need a 16mm screw, which I'm not sure which one that is, so I'm just going to get my ruler and find the right screw in there, which is possibly that one, which is, you see there, so that's the screw that I need. And what I've also done is the clock face, which I won't be putting on today. Um, I've put the decal on it and I've put some Tamiya acrylic clear on there. Just the, uh, what was it, that one, X22 on that. So that's still drying, so that's not going to be going to be ready till tomorrow for it to finish drying. But you can see there that it's got a 
I'm trying to really catch in the light. So hopefully that'll look good when it's uh, when it's all finished drying off. So I will get started on doing the fork set. Right, so what I'm going to do to start with is make sure I get the right ones of these. Because it's very easy to uh, get this wrong to mess it all up. So just checking which way these go. Pretty sure that wants to go in there. go on there and then you've got your kind of trip will be on there and obviously the brake on the other side so what I'm going to do is just take some of the paint off here so because it's a tight fit I'll sort of paint it up just get your knife carefully around and scrape all the paint off and it'll give you the clearance that you need to actually get it to fit but also it gives you a better surface for gluing as well so I should have done this before but see now that's a better fit now and goes in no problem if it focuses so I'll get those glued on and then uh, and do the handlebars yeah it's really important you make sure that you get them the right way around to start with because otherwise you're uh, Grips will be the wrong way round, and that will never do. So that's that one on. And that's going to check out that fits. Sometimes there's a notch which is underneath there, and you can see it lines up in there. I'm just looking for that to see where it actually goes, which is there. So that's okay. So I'll just put a little bit of glue on the end of that. Slide that on. And I'll do the same on this one. And again, you can see it's got the notch on there for it. Same applies, bit of glue, line that notch, and that's the uh, tops of the forks done. So they will fit over the frame. So that goes in there, and then I just line that like that, I screw down the middle, and then this bit here just goes in the centre to cover the uh, the screw so just seeing how it all uh, all looks I'm not going to glue that on yet because I want to uh, to do the wiring first so I will go off and do that and then uh, and then do the other bit but before I do that I was going to show you is the jig and I just need to file the centre of those uh, of that rod out a little bit because when I cut it it crimped it a little bit so I just need to make sure that this pin fits through which it does now so Push that all the way through, make sure it's tight, 
And then what you've got is if you put the screw through there, let me just show you how the mock up on the jig. how to use this for those that are wondering help if I get it the right way round Put that the right way around to help. So what you've got is this centerpiece here when you line it up. It's designed to hold that screw like that. So then you tighten everything up and then it allows you to work on the fork assembly, do all of the wiring for the uh, brake lines and everything. So for example, that one down there, I'm not gonna glue it in, but just to give an example, is I can get my tweezers with, oh, I don't know the camera to drop everything. I can get my tweezers, get that into there, wire it all up while it's on this jig. Um, so it means that I'm not having to worry about knocking it or leaning against it, pushing it on the desk, putting pressure on the back of it when I'm working on this side, pushing on the other side or anything like that. It holds it all in place. So it's a cool feature of this jig, or one of the many cool features of this jig that you can do that. So uh, I just thought I'd give you a quick mock-up and show you that. So that's my next step is to go off and do all of this wiring and sort of detail it up a bit more and then that will be it for this video so um, I'll post some photos up as well as I go along so thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it